You're watching TSN, Canada's sports leader, a division of Bell Media. New Year's Eve, and what a way to start it. Canada, Russia, the Russians will have a boisterous home crowd hoping to usher in 2013 with a win over their old rival. Team Canada will ice a complete line for the first time in this tournament. Nobody suspended, nobody out with an injury, all 13 forwards. First place up for grabs at the World Juniors. It's a New Year's Eve tradition. Cheering on Canada at the World Juniors. John Tavares, scores! This year, the opponent is the home nation, Russia. Rebound score! Bail Yakupov! With a bye to the semi-final on the line, expect an explosive matchup. Shoot scores! Right at Newton Hopkins! As it was when these two teams met 25 years ago. I would say there was a pretty deep hatred for the Russian players and what they stood for. The tallest, the tallest, will be the score! Canada, Russia, let the fireworks begin. Already 2013 in Sydney, Australia, still a full day away in Canada. Should old acquaintance be forgot? Uh, who's kidding who? The old acquaintances will never be forgotten, these two. Canada, Russia, seems they hook up every year about this time. Today they end 2012 with a trip to the semis on the line. How are you doing, Canada? James Duffy and Bob McKenzie with you. Four and a half hours away from 2013 in Ufa, Russia. Still a full day in Canada, but we wish you a great New Year in advance and a pretty good way to start your New Year's Eve. Culturally, politically, Canada, Russia is not what it once was. But from a pure hockey perspective, in this tournament, it's just as heated, just as competitive as ever. Consider this. Canada's been so successful this century. In the 21st century, they've only lost 12 games at the World Juniors. But six of those to Russia, and the last two have been devastating. The gold medal game in Buffalo two years ago, the semifinals in Alberta last year. Canada, as mentioned, ices a complete lineup today. For the first time in the tournament, we begin our coverage with Nabil Kareem. Nabil? James, so far the constant for Canada in this tournament has been their top line, but that's about to change. Jonathan Drouin making his way to the top line. Jonathan Huberto getting bumped down to the second line. And it's not because Huberto is not playing well, it's because Duran has been playing so well. Steve Spot has been raving about his play. He said he's skilled, he's gritty, he's aggressive on the forecheck. They're hoping he can bring some more speed and pace to that line. They're going to try it out. Uh, Steve Spot saying his hockey IQ is absolutely through the roof. He is a very, very special player and they're hoping that top line really works out well for them tonight against Russia. Now for more on this contest, let's throw it to the guys calling it. Ford Miller, Ray Farrar. All right, thanks very much, Nabil. And uh, on the second line, Ryan Strom at center has been terrific for Canada most of the time. Yeah, there's been a little bit of good and bad with Ryan Strom. And like Mark Shifley, I think Strom has taken an enormous step forward this year from last year's tournament to this year. He's got four goals on the tournament. I notice a, a definite difference in his strength and his ability to stay over the puck. He's always been a slick, dynamic, offensive player. But he's not been able to escape the penalty bun. Going back to the pre-tournament games in Finland, Ryan Strom has had a penchant for taking a, a penalty in the offensive zone or the neutral zone. And they're the type of penalties that Steve Spott wants eliminated. He's talked to Strom about this. Canada coming off a very impressive win against the United States, but now will face the best group of forwards it's seen. I think this is the fastest group of forwards in the in this pool, at least in the tournament. The Russians are an explosive offensive team. They get on the rush and they can really go. Grigorenko and Kucherov have been a wonderful pair together. Canada will try to match Dougie Hamilton and Scott Harrington against them. And Nail Yakupov came alive in the game against Germany. His line with Kokolchev will see a lot of, Mac, of, of Xavier Ouellette as well. So the matchups will be very important. But this offensive group for Russia is one that you have to get up close on and take the rights away. Used to be that Canada would play the Russians and not know much about them, but after a four-game series in the summer, the six-game Subway Series, and so many of the Russians playing in the CHL, this might be the team that Canada knows best, James. 
All right, thank you guys. So Boone Jenner suspension finally over. He makes his debut. JC Lippon suspension over. So Canada with 13 forwards. Here are your lines. It's a complete overhaul, Bob, which is a little strange for a team that's gone 3-0. and Why do they do it? Well, they don't want complacency to set in. Uh, they think Huberto will be fine on that second line with Strom. Keep an eye on Huberto's playmaking ability from below the goal line with the finishers like Strom and Raddy. Boone Jenner makes his return to the lineup on what has to be the highest scoring checking line you can imagine. Jenner's got 27 goals in the OHL. So does Brett Ritchie, the right winger on that line, and Philip Deno has got 14 in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Jenner is a returning player from last year, second round pick of the Columbus Blue Jackets. He has to make sure that he doesn't cross the line. He's a player who does play on the line. He's got to stay out of the penalty box, but he can be a physical force and a goal scoring force for Team Canada in that shutdown role. And you see the fourth line there with Kamara, McNeil, and McKinnon. That will be more of a grinding line, even though those guys have some offensive ability. Tons of praise for Malcolm Subban after his performance in the last game. Jonathan Huberto hashtag the tweet about Subban brick wall. Does he have to be a brick wall again today? Well, he does, and I like the mindset that he had immediately following the game against the Americans. He was lights out good. He was asked about whether he proved critics wrong, and he said, hey, it was just one game, and that's exactly what it was. But it was one game that showed that Malcolm Subban can take his game to the same level as Andre Makarov or John Gibson, the other goaltenders in the division for the United States and Russia that have played so well. Subban was a difference maker in that game, but now it's a clean slate. He's going head-to-head -head with Makarov, who's been outstanding in this tournament for the Russians. So it'll be a great goaltending battle. All right, this is for first and second. We already know who has placed third and gets the last spot in the quarterfinals from Group B. That was decided earlier today. If you missed it, USA Slovakia on TSN. Winner to the medal round, a loser to the relegation. First period, Cole Bardro gets inside the Slovak defense and it's one nothing. But just over 10 seconds after that, the Slovaks come right back. Mattis Matisse in alone and snipes on John Gibson. It's a tie. But less than a minute after that, Jake McCabe in tight. Nice little backhand, 2-1 to one for the U.S., and they would roll from there. Still in the first, now 3-1. to one. Mike Riley chips it in past Adam Nagy, smiles everyone. The U.S. would cruise to a 9-3 win, and they are on to the quarterfinal. Here are your groupie standings as they are right now. All the positions set except first and second. USA will play the second place team in Group A. That's still to be determined. Winner of Canada, Russia goes straight to the semis. The loser plays the third place team from Group A in the other quarterfinal. Speaking of which, Switzerland and the Czech Republic pick it up in the third period. Swiss on the power play. They're down 3-2. Samuel Guerra's one-timer off Dario Simeon's head. Whatever. It's a tie game. They'll take it. And so we're off to overtime. And in overtime. The Czech Republic threatening. Thomas Hurdle wraparound stuffs it in. The Czechs win 4-3. They secure a place in the medal round. Switzerland awaits the outcome of this one. Sweden and Finland. First period already 2-0 Sweden. Victor Rask scores from the slot. 3-0 Sweden. But the Finns who've come back before in this tournament. 3-1. Rasmus Ristolainen makes it 3-2. Then two-man advantage. Joel Army is second in the game. 3-3, but we can tell you Sweden has just scored two quick goals, so it is now 5-3 for Sweden. So Finland, who came back twice against Switzerland, came back from three goals down in this game, will have to do it again. If Sweden wins, they'll get a bye to the semifinal. Finland needs to take this game at least to overtime to make the quarters and knock out the Swiss. If Finland somehow comes back and wins in regulation, we'll have a three-way tie for first with a complicated tiebreaker that's basically calculus class, and that will be frightening to all of us. More international hockey. Canada, A.T. Davos in the Spangler Cup final. Canada on the board quickly. Patrice Bergeron pokes in the loose puck. It's 1-0. Moments later, on the power play, Derek Walzer, point shot, beats Leonardo Giannone. It's 2-0 for the Canadian team. Now shorthanded, still in the first. Bergeron, remember last lockout, he was so great, the MVP in the World Juniors. This lockout, terrific in the Spangler as he sets up Ryan Smith. Then another Bergeron to Smith, 4-1. They win 7-2. Bergeron has now won the World, the World Junior, the Olympics, the Spangler, and the Stanley Cup little bit of a later start for you today, so hopefully most of you are watching us live, and in about, oh, 25 minutes or so, you'll get to see the two best offensive players in the tour tournament so far. It's the Ryan Express, Ryan times two, Ryan Strom and Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Strom tied for the tournament lead in goals coming into today, Ryan Nugent Hopkins 
in the lead in the tournament in points. And the new just standing by with Nabil Kareem. Ryan, it's going to be a wild atmosphere in here. Are you uh, going to relish the role of being the villain today? Yeah, for sure. It's, uh, I mean, like you said, it's going to be a great atmosphere, and we're excited about uh, taking on Russia. You told me earlier in the tournament you're a competitive guy. Uh, your future teammate, Neil Yakupov, is on the other side there. Does that put a little extra juice in your step today? Um, yeah, maybe a bit. I think uh, I think uh, you can get all the juice you need going up uh, against Russia, Canada Russia. It's always going to be an intense game. Thanks, Ryan. All right, thanks. Yes, no extra juice needed from either side. Ahead of the pregame show, it's been 25 years since Canada has won gold in Russia. We'll look back at the 1988 tournament. Plus, Jamie McLennan will drop by with post to post and break down today's goaltending matchup. Huge challenge for the Canadians against Vakarov. Hey, Dave, who should we use to ship this to Boston? FedEx. But it's not urgent. Don't be so quick to judge. FedEx is also amazing. And less urgent, I know. I've seen this commercial, but we need freight, Anthony. <laughs> FedEx is amazing at freight, too, but Orlock, we're small. FedEx has small business solutions, too, you know. Huh. I didn't know FedEx did all that. But what's with the gimmicks? Beats me. For ground, freight, or small business, FedEx, solutions that matter. Our goal was clear from the start to help improve minor hockey in communities we serve by providing uniforms and ice time and renovating community rinks, giving young players a better shot at their goal. Lowe's never stop improving. Congratulations to this month's Advil Highlight of the Month Finals. Edwin Rivera Sr. from Havelock, Ontario. And Simon LeBlanc from Alma, Quebec. Enter for a chance to be one of next month's finals. Hit tsn.ca slash Advil and upload your video for a chance to win $25,000. Advil. Take action. It's New Year's Madness at the Brick. Saturday and Sunday only. Get this body leather sofa only $3.99. This reclining sofa only $5.99. This sectional is only $6.99. Hurry, quantities are limited for sofas. Nobody beats the Brick. TSN and TSN2 ring in the new tennis year in Melbourne with the 2013 Australian Open. Novak Djokovic returns as the reigning champion. While world number one, Victoria Azarenka, defends the women's crown. The superstars will light up the courts down under. The 2013 Australian Open begins Sunday, January 13th on TSN and TSN2. Hi from the McKinnons in Yufa, Russia. To Cole Harbor, Dartmouth, Spring Hill, and the Moosehead fans out there. Happy 2013 to everyone. Hi, my name is Jonathan Duran. I play for the Halifax Moosehead. And this is Breakaway News. Well, you know, in practice, sometimes we get um, some spare times and the goalie's there. So, yeah, you know, we try to work some different moves and what, what works and next and not. And, uh, yeah, you got to bury those chances. You know, you don't get one breakaway every game. So, uh, it's really important to get that goal when you get that breakaway chance. It doesn't only work breakaways. You know, you work your hands and stuff and uh, coordination. You go from speed and slower and uh, faster. So, I think it helps me on game a lot. You'll see a lot of Jonathan Drouet today on the top line with Mark Scheifele and Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Just 17 years old, but has looked very comfortable and shown why he may be in the conversation for the first overall pick in this year's draft, next year's draft, before the tournament is out. Let's hear from some Russians about this rivalry. The Canadian team is a very strong team. They have their own style of play. We always play in the finals with the Canada. I think that Canadian hockey is just great. Uh, the Canadian team is, I think, that the greatest one. And uh, they have their own style. They're so great. And I think that they're... Yeah, just because I... It wasn't really trash talk, was it? They're very friendly in UFA towards the Canadians. There was likely some talk of redemption amongst Team Canada today. After all, the Russians did beat Team Canada in the last two tournaments. But frankly, that word is overused these days. You want real redemption? Consider what the 1988 Team Canada had to do. They had to erase the embarrassment of the most famous brawl and disqualification in world junior history. Well, 
1987, we were going into the game against the Russians, and you know we were sure to medal, so the guys were pretty excited. The big fight started in the second period. Two of the Russian players jumped over the boards and skated in the pile, and it was just a natural reaction for us to jump over the boards. And there's no way order here. They don't know how to deal with it. Went, went out of control, uh, the ref uh, e even went off the ice. They didn't know what to do anymore, so they turned off the lights. They're trying to turn the lights off, and they turned them off. It was pretty scary because you couldn't even see your hand in front of your face. It was that dark. I've never seen anything like this. This is not permitted. After that, we went back in the dressing room hoping to resume the game, and uh, it, that never happened, so uh, we were disqualified. And there's guys with uh, German Shepherds and machine guns in the hallway quickly got on a bus and actually got escorted right out of the country. Fast forward to the next year. We made sure to, to tell everybody what happened in 87. Uh, it was communist Russia, so right when we got into uh, the airport and off the airplane, it was, it was just a different world. 25 years ago, going into Moscow, uh, you see guys carrying big guns and machine guns and walking around in their army outfits. and. I noticed everything was bleak. It was all grays and blacks. You didn't see a lot of color. Everybody was kind of grays, blacks, browns as far as uh, clothing went. I don't know. There's something about Russia that uh, not scares me, but intimidates me. The rivalry between Canada and Russia back then was the unknown. We didn't know about these Russian players when we were going to play against them. We heard about these great players like McGillney and Fedorov. The fifth game was against the Russians, and we only had two games left after that against Germany and Poland, which weren't very strong uh, hockey teams. So it came down, whoever won against us and the Russians would win the gold medal. Russia and Canada were rated seventh and eighth going into the tournament out of eight teams because of the brawl the year before. I would say there was a pretty deep hatred for, you know, the Russian players and, and, and kind of what they stood for. The tallest, the tallest will be the power. Uh, the whole crowd whistling after us, uh, like they do over there. I've never in the rest of my career been as jacked as I was for one hockey game as I was for that game against the Russians. Takes the shot the floor, he scores! I don't know if Jimmy Waite ever played as good the rest of his career as he did against the Russians. Thank God for Jimmy Wade. Here's a chance save by Jimmy Wade. Oh, what a big save. One save, I remember, I'm just laying down on my, on my side. Back of the net. And then the, the, this guy's got an open net, and I, I just threw up my arm and hit my arm and went wide. Jimmy Wade just managed to steer it past the corner. The biggest goal that was ever scored in my career was scored by a kid named Trevor Linden. Here's the goal score by Linden. One of the key words that we used that year was redemption. You know, for me, it was like righting the wrong from last year, the black cloud against the team. Canada is going to win this game. It's all over. The, the exhilaration that we had when that final buzzer went and the score was still 3-2 Canada was something I'll never forget and probably, without a doubt, the most cherished memory I have of my hockey career. And yet still the only time, 1988, that Canada has won gold in the World Juniors in Russia. And so different, as the guys were mentioning in that piece, the format when it was round robin. You won that big game and still had to win a couple of others to clinch the gold. Uh, this format seems to work much better, but they're going to change it next year. No more buys to the semifinal. Four teams from each group will make it into the quarterfinals. But today, Canada and Russia still playing for a bye. Here's Ty Ratty with Nabil Kareem. Ty, this is your fourth game, but any nerves with the magnitude of who you're playing today? Yeah, I have some nerves, but that's a good thing. I think uh, Donnie Nockbar said uh, nerves are a good thing, and I, and I know a bunch of us are nervous. What did you learn about Russia playing against them in the Canada-Russia series over the summer? Uh, they're a skilled team, skilled and fast, and uh, we got to shut down those top two lines, and we talked a lot about that, and uh, we're prepared and we're ready to go. Thanks, Ty. Yeah, thank you. Jamie McLennan is here with Post to Post analyzing the goaltenders for us. Uh, the Canadians that were on the team last year and everybody watches remembers Andre Makarov, the Russians who came in late in that semifinal game when the floodgates were open and shut the door and has looked great in this tournament so far. What do you see as his biggest asset? It's his ability to scramble. He does not give up on a puck. His work ethic in the net is outstanding. And because he plays more of a narrow stance, you may think there's more net to shoot at. 
but he's got quick feet and he can get across. And with that work ethic in the net, it makes him very, very dangerous because Team Canada may think they have an open net. You got to bury it because he can get there and he's capable of those game changing saves. So that makes him very dangerous to play against. And remember, everybody thought Vasilevsky would be the starter in this tournament, but uh, he's on the bench right now because Makarov has been so good. We continue on the pregame show, still more ahead. We'll get some analysis from Ray Ferraro as he breaks down what Canada needs to do to stop that powerful, speedy Russian offense. That's next. take long to see the Canadians love their Tim Hortons coffee and donuts. And with their new irresistible coffee and donut deal, when you buy Canada's favorite coffee, you can now get an always fresh donut for just 49 cents. It's time for Valium. It's time for Tim's. Hey, Dave. Who should we use to ship this to Boston? FedEx. But it's not urgent. Don't be so quick to judge. FedEx is also amazing. And less urgent. I know. I've seen this commercial. But we need freight, Anthony. <laughs> FedEx is amazing at freight, too. But, Orlock, we're small. FedEx has small business solutions, too, you know. Huh. I didn't know FedEx did all that. But what's with the gimmicks? Beats me. For ground, freight, or small business, FedEx. Solutions that matter. Our goal was clear from the start to help improve minor hockey in communities we serve by providing uniforms and ice time and renovating community rinks, giving young players a better shot at their goal. Lowe's never stop improving. Your muscles help you push and pull, lift and lower, move and flex. But when they are aching or your body's in pain, your muscles weaken you. Try Tylenol Muscle and Body. It provides relief from muscle aches and body pain. Tylenol Muscle and Body is specially formulated to relieve muscle and body pain for up to eight hours, so you can get back to normal. Tylenol Muscle and Body. Get back to normal, whatever your normal is. Delicious made easy with Bailey's. Step one, your favorite blend of coffee. Step two, Bailey's. Step three, a little imagination. Bailey's, delicious made easy. To our family and friends in Canada. Happy New Year. From the Binningtons here in Ufa, Russia. I'm Boone Jenner. I play for the Oshawa Generals. And this is corner puck protect. The player starts in the corner and uh, there's two kind of pylons set up around the circle with sticks coming off them and you're coming out of the corner around the top of the circle protecting the puck and trying to get a good shot on the net. The point of this drill is to protect the puck during the game. Uh, as a forward, you protect it a lot in the offensive zone, and uh, it helps coming off walls and getting a shot on that. Certainly one of the latest debuts in World Junior history, Boone Jenner finally in the lineup after serving that three-game suspension for a late hit in the pre-tournament game. 27 goals in 32 games when he left Oshawa for camp. Here's Ray Ferraro calling the game with Gordon Miller once again. From what we've seen so far, is the grigorenko kucherov combination the most lethal for Russia and the biggest concern for Canada? Yeah, it is, James. And you know it's the biggest concern because Steve Spott said before the game that Dougie Hamilton and Scott Harrington are going to be matched up against Grigorenko, the Buffalo Sabres first-round pick, who is a playmaker. He really dishes the puck well. And Nikita Kucherov, who is a Tampa Bay second round pick, he's a quick strike scorer. He gets to the right spot at the right time. There's a real talent in that, getting there in a timely fashion. He's got a terrific wrist shot. And Canada's going to look to shut those two down in particular, and they'll try to do it with Harrington and Hamilton. We've seen Russia three times now in this tournament. Have you, you've noticed a clear offensive strategy. Explain it. Well, they're such a highly skilled team, and they, they move the puck quickly on the power play in particular. And what they love to love to do is tee up the one-timer. And what we have seen time and time again, it's, it's Nesterov, another Tampa Bay draft pick, uh, with the passing spot. And, and he finds Albert Yerulin, who has got three goals in three games. He's got an absolute howitzer of a shot. It's heavy. He shoots it hard on the net. He doesn't miss the net very often. And we've seen the Russians go through the box on the power play, 
D to D on the power play, but each time they want to shoot the one-timer from the weak side, and Canada's really going to have to be sharp to deny that pass first before they shoot the one-timer. Good stuff as always from Ray Ferraro. Your hero Ray and Gord call the game in just a few minutes' time. It's been a challenging week of line juggling for head coach Steve Spott. You had Richie hurt in the pre-tournament, had to limit his action, was down a forward there, Jenner suspended, uh, down another one, Richie working him back in, then two guys kicked out of the Slovakia game. They were down to 10 at one point. Lippon suspended, Jenner suspended, they're back up to 11. Now finally, he has 13 for this game and he's changed the lines a bit. He's standing by with Nabil Kareem. Steve, uh, you kept the top line uh, together throughout the tournament. Why change it now against Russia? Well, it's also our first opportunity to see, you know, uh, really a full a roster for us for the first time. And I think when we look at our, our top line with Ryan Nugent Hopkins, we just wanted to see what it would be like with a little bit more speed, maybe a little bit more energy up there. You know, Jonathan Huberto is such a world-class player, but he plays a little bit of a different game. So just to look, we're going to try, see if it works, and we'll put Jonathan with Ryan Strom and, and Ty Ratty and see if that works. But ultimately, again, if, uh, if we don't like it, we'll make adjustments as we go. You've mentioned before that the Russian transition game is pretty good. Uh, how are you going to make that difficult for them? Well, we have to make sure we play in their end. That's first and foremost. We have to be physical on their defensemen. And, and secondly, our defense have to stay alert at all times because they've got the ability to throw that 80-foot or 90-foot pass for a breakaway. So we have to stay alert. I think that's the key word tonight. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Here's Bob's game plan for Team Canada. Simplify the power play. Uh, last time, too much passing, not enough shots, not enough traffic. It went 0-4 against the Americans. Needs to be better today. Beware of the stretch pass. The Russians like to get Neil Yakupov behind the defense. Defense have to be aware of the guy trying to sneak in behind them. And number three, Andre Makarov. He's been outstanding in this tournament. They know from summer games against Makarov that they've got to get traffic in front of them. They cannot allow him to see every shot. He was busy 40-plus shots, 30-plus shots in the summer games in Halifax and Yaroslavl. And this is a player they know that they've got to get second chances on, and they've got to get bodies to the front of the net. And that's the key to trying to break this guy down. Uh, Russia with a great one-two combo with Vasilevsky as the backup. They hope they don't have to see him today. You quickly wanted to give a shout-out before we go. Yeah, a good friend of mine, James Dunn, a little 12-year-old from Wallacetown, Ontario, not too far from St. Thomas, Ontario, which is Jumbo Joe Thornton territory. Uh, James is in hospital, Children's Hospital in London. Uh, he's going through a tough battle, and he's doing a great job, and I just wanted to give him a shout-out. Uh, he'll be watching this game today. He's a huge junior hockey fan, loves Bo Horvat and the London Knights. So uh, say hi to James. To James, Happy New Year, and to all the kids and all the adults watching us. Uh, should be a treat today. It's Canada, Russia on TSN on the last day of group play at the World Junior Hockey Championship. We'll get you set for the drop of the puck next. from the start to help improve minor hockey in communities we serve by providing uniforms and ice time and renovating community rinks, giving young players a better shot at their goal. Lowe's never stopped improving. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. oh, you made your own lunch. Impressive. Actually, it's chicken rotini. Chicken rotini with cream sauce and peas and mushrooms. Wow. Well, you're going to have to give me that recipe. Wait, move your hand. Tim's! <laughs> nice try. A hint of Parmesan and seasoned all white meat and a creamy sauce. Tim Horton's new chicken rotini, just four fifty nine. You know, you had me till the toast. <laughs> I say the same thing twice, I'm awkward when I speak. Ain't got the perfect smile, don't turn heads on my street. Trying to be a superstar like everybody else. But being myself is something I do well. Express yourself. Express yourself. Our goal was clear from the start to help improve minor hockey in communities we serve by providing uniforms and ice time and renovating community rinks, giving young players a better shot at their goal. Lowe's never stop improving. The ad girl highlight of the month is back on TSN, and we want to see you take action. Now, this move was a challenge. You won't catch me doing this one. 
and this was worth $25,000. Hit tsn.ca slash Advil and upload your action highlight for a chance to win $25,000 and see your video on TSN. Now, I want to see your moves. Show us what you can do. Advil. Take action. You know, the rivalry is huge. It's, it gets bigger every year. We don't like them. They, they don't like us. It's always a battle. It's a war. We all remember what they did to us last year in the semifinals. You know, we're looking to deliver the same fate in Russia. Just to be able to go there and, and try to beat them in their home soil. It's in the back of your mind that, uh, you know, what happened last year or the year before. So, you know, it should be fun. day of 2012, the final day of group play at the World Juniors. On the line, a better start to 2013 with a shorter path to gold. Good morning, Canada. Happy almost New Year. James Duffy and Bob McKenzie with you. Thanks for spending the last day of 2012 with us here at the World Juniors. We have the words every hockey fan loves to hear. Canada versus Russia. They hoped it would come to this when they made the schedule. The last game of the round, packed house in Ufa, Russia, and these two old rivals who have dominated this tournament through the decades. No gold medal on the line today, though that still could happen a little bit later on. Instead, it's first place in the group and a bye to the semifinal. To get you set for it, Gord Miller and Ray Ferraro. Gentlemen. All right, James, Happy New Year coming, everyone. Uh, Dougie Hamilton and Scott Harrington, two Canadian defensemen, did not hit the score sheet in Canada's 2-1 win over the United States, but they played a very important role in that game, and they will again tonight. They, they played the important role because they became a... Nothing brings Canadians together better than Delizio Pizza and our national pastime. Join Delizio in supporting our team at the upcoming World Junior Hockey Championship. Get our limited edition boxes in stores now for your chance to win a VIP trip for four to Sweden for next year's World Junior Hockey Championship. Plus daily instant win prizes, including Hockey Canada jerseys and a party pack from Delizio Pizza and Nestle Ice Cream. Go to DeliziOHockey.com for details. Go Canada, go! It's not delivery, it's Delizio. would be the final as we welcome you to the post game show happy almost new year once again canada james duffy and bob mckenzie full half hour of reaction to canada's victory over russia ahead it includes jamie mclennan evaluating the goaltending craig button on other topics and of course bob mckenzie 2012 began with a crushing team canada loss against russia in calgary last year in the semi-final of the world junior hockey championship 2012 would end with a rematch halfway around the world in Ufa. First period, Valery Nikushkin hits Tyler Wotherspoon from behind. That's a five-minute major. That's a game misconduct. That's trouble for Russia. Canada looking to capitalize. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, uh, when he's around, they usually do. To Hamilton, Dougie has the one time over Makarov. It's one nothing Canada. Then Moore, Shifley picks up the loose puck, backhands it in. It's 2 nothing for the Canadians. The Russians would respond, though Shifley this time tossed it up to Kucherov. That's a mistake. He's deadly. 2-1 to one Canada after one. Second period, Nugent Hopkins finds Jonathan Drouin behind the net. He'll stuff in the wraparound. He's magic behind that net. Hopkins, third assist of the game for the Nuge. 3-1 Canada. Kuchero 
chair off alone in, in front and Subban with what would be a key save. More on that from Noodles a little bit later. Late third period, 4-1 Canada. Yakov hauled down in the partial break. That means a penalty shot, but there might be nobody better in junior hockey than Malcolm Subban. Stopped 19 in a row once in the OHL. Stops that one. Celebration, and it's a 4-1 Canadian victory, earning that bye to the semifinal. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, 11 points now in the tournament. That is four more than the next guy, Alex Galchenyuk, from the American team. Canada, discipline has been a focus throughout this tournament. Only two minor penalties before that penalty shot at the end of the game. And in the last 11 tournaments now, the last 11 World Juniors, Canada has only lost two games in group play. Both of those to Sweden. Another solid game for the D, including Ryan Murphy, who's with Nabil Kareem. Ryan, uh, how much fun was that to play in? Uh, it was one of the most fun games I've ever played. And I mean, it was a huge crowd, and they were really emotional at the start. But uh, our plan was to uh, silent them by the end, and that's what we did. So it was, uh, it was a big win on our part, and uh, we're just uh, one step closer. The guys in the broadcast booth were saying you had an extra jump in your step today. Do you feel this was your best game? Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, I got those opportunities offensively, and uh, I got those opportunities to join the rush, and I took advantage of them. Uh, I would have liked to contribute a bit more offensively, but we had a great game as a team, and uh, we came out with the points in the end. Talk about the job on the power play against the U.S. It struggled. Uh, you were out on power play in this one. Uh, what were you guys trying to do out there? Uh, I think we all met it as a group, and uh, the main thing is we wanted to uh, use our creativity. That's that's what a power play is supposed to be. Maybe uh, in the first few games we were uh, too uh, hung up on structure and uh, and set plays that we got away from our creativity. So this game, uh, we got some dirty ones, and we got a good shot from Hammer from the point. So uh, we, we were working well tonight. Finally, the third period, you guys seemed to really dominate. Was that your best period of hockey so far in this tournament? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we you, you have guys like Boone Jenner and Phil Deneau grinding down low and keeping that puck down low for 30, 40 seconds. And in the end, that's huge for us. I mean, uh, coming down to the last minutes uh, to play, it's uh, it helps us that, that much more to know that uh, they, they battled for us at the beginning and uh, they, they helped us huge get that win tonight. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. When a guy can say uh, under this much pressure that it's one of the most fun games he's ever participated in, you know things went well. And a terrific game for Ryan Murphy and the Canadian defense. Ryan Nugent Hopkins has been great no matter who he's played with. But Steve Spot switches things up, puts Jonathan Druin on that top line, and uh, fair to say it worked extremely well. Yeah, the hunch paid off. We've been saying all tournament, the number one advantage Team Canada has over other teams in this tournament, you've got a 19-year-old Ryan Nugent Hopkins, almost 20, who's able to participate in this tournament in his last year of eligibility, and he dominates offensively. I mean, look at the passing play. He's got three assists on the day. He's leading this tournament in scoring. Throws one at the net, a little deflection there by Shifley, and Drew Ann is able to show the quick hands. And that Drew Ann hands, unbelievable. And to put him up on that line, for Steve Spott to have the, uh, the instincts to do that and to have it pay off, the way that it did. That got Team Canada rolling in a big way in the early going, creating offense from the power play. A lot of Canadians have not seen Boone Jenner. He played on the team last year, didn't have a huge role on the team last year. He gets suspended for the first three games of this tournament. Today we found out how much Canada had missed him. Have you ever seen a force like that in the offensive end? I haven't in the last few years in the World Juniors, I don't think. No, he really dominated this. And again, it's, it's a, a guy in his last year of eligibility who played in the tournament last year, who stepped in, hasn't played a game in the tournament because of the suspension. He's a physical player. He often plays on the edge, sometimes goes over it, got suspended last year, missed the bronze medal game, got suspended, missed the first three games of this tournament. But he was able to step up and absolutely dominate physically. And he's been playing like this all season long for the Oshawa Generals. And as I said countless times, if the NHL season had begun in October, I don't think he would have been in the Columbus Blue Jacket lineup. But the way he's played in Oshawa this year, where he's looked, uh, looked like a man amongst boys, and the same thing in this tournament, he could be in the NHL real soon if they get their act together on that front. Uh, let's hear from the guy who got the cape for Team Canada, Boone Jenner, who's with Nabil. Boone, you waited a long time uh, to get in the lineup, or what seemed to be a long time. You get in, you have a great game. Uh, how was the emotion of the game and keeping up to the pace of the game? It was awesome. I mean, uh, you know, my adrenaline was going, uh, you know, since I woke up this morning. We knew the uh, building was going to be electric, and I uh, wanted to feed off that energy. So, you know, I've been ready to go and thinking about that game. So it's, it's good to get out there and back on the ice. Was there any hesitation in your game, maybe to hold back a little bit or just to play it safe? No, you know what, I'm, I'm here to play hockey, and, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play hard, and uh, yeah. 
The penalty kill was critical, especially in the second period. What were you guys trying to do out there? You know, don't give them any uh, great A scoring chances for sure. I mean, we wanted to keep them to the outside, you know, have good sticks, be in good lanes, and, uh, you know, get some clears. And I think we did that, and, uh, you know, our penalty kill uh, deserves a lot of credit. In the third period, you guys spent a lot of time in Russia's zone and it was led by your line. It seemed like you had a lot of chemistry going on there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I thought uh, me, Richie, and Dino were playing good together, hard on the four check, uh, you know, cycling pucks. Uh, Richie's a big body, and same with Phil. So uh, we were doing good, and uh, we just got to keep that going. Did you ever think it'd be feel so great to wear a cape? Yeah, it actually feels pretty good. Uh, I haven't worn one in a while, so, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm happy with it. Thanks, Ben. Thank you. Tough decisions on those capes when you have a game like that when there's about four or five guys, but certainly Boone Jenner was worthy. Here's Jamie McLennan with Post to Post. Malcolm Subban, terrific again today. What did you like? He wasn't that busy for the rest of the game, but early on was busy. What did you like about his game then? His exchanges with his D-man. It was a small detail that a goaltender needs to work out, especially in a short tournament like this, but I just thought he was very, very strong with his exchanges, his puck play, and what happens, and people don't realize how important this is because now you're not defending you're able to get out of your zone very clean right here nice little chip play right to the d direct pass now you can get on the attack you can get going offensively any bobbles with that play any type of miscommunication you end up defending chances against maybe a goal against he's had a number of big saves in the last couple of games but he seems to be able to come up with the big saves when they're needed the most. It was one the most timely that you saw in this game? Absolutely. In the second period at 3-1, Malcolm Subban makes an outstanding save. And, and you see early on him identify a turnover here. Completely just relaxed, standing up, but still focused on his play here. And you can see him just relaxed, knowing that potentially, if there is a turnover, there is some options. Gregorenko pinches down and creates that turnover. Now Subban identifies the potential threats in front of him. He's got somebody in front of him and through the seam on the back door. Now he locks into position, loads up down on that outside edge. He knows that it goes back door and he gets an explosive push across and makes a terrific game-saving save in the second period. That keeps it at 3-1. It allows Canada to continue to roll Subban with that TSN game-saving save. Goalies really think that much, eh? I thought I you just kind of stood there and stuck out the pad once in a while. Well, that was just you. Yeah, that was just me. Uh, what's the grade? You've been giving a grade every game. I think you got three out of five in the first two games. Was it five out of five? or yes. Five out of five against the Americans. What do you get today? Five out of five. And it, you know, the cherry on top of, of the uh, icing with that, that Sunday there. Five on a five because he made that penalty shot save at the end. Terrific stuff. Uh, Jamie McLennan and Post to Post. Other games this morning, if you were with us early, and I know you were, it was the U.S. against Slovakia. Winner gets third place in the group, advances to the middle round. Cole Bardrow gets inside on the Slovak defense early. It's one to nothing. But just 10 seconds after that, those spunky Slovaks, Mattis Matisin alone, snipes on John Gibson tie game. But a minute later, back the other way. This was crazy early on. Jake McCabe in tight, and it's two to one for the U.S. Still in the first now, three to one. Mike Riley chips it by Adam Nagy. Sweet little backhand, and that was pretty much it. It was a romp from there. Big smiles from the Americans. They win 9-3 is the final. What does that mean? Well, with Canada's victory today, they finish undefeated and win the group. Russia in second, the Americans in third, Slovakia and and Germany will go to the relegation round. So, who do the Americans play? Who do the Russians play in the quarters? That would depend on what happened over in Group A. Switzerland and the Czech Republic. This group's been crazy. A lot of tight games. Third period, this one no different. Samuel Guerra's one-timer off Dario Simeon's head. Whatever it takes, the Swiss have tied things up at three. Overtime needed. The Czechs putting on pressure. And it's Thomas Hurdle stuffing it around on the wraparound. And with that, the Czechs win 4-3. They advance to the medal round. The Swiss had to wait for this one. Sweden and Finland. They needed Sweden to win. Already 2-0. Victor Rass scores from the slot. 3-0. They're cruising, right? Uh-uh. Finns come back. Now 3-2. Two-man advantage. Joel Army is second. Ties it at 3. But the Finns... A couple of great comebacks in this tournament, but they faded down the stretch. That's Victor Arvidsson scoring 4-3. It ends up 7-4. So Sweden finishes perfect. They win all four games. They won one in overtime, hence they lose a point. 
They win the group. They go straight to the semis, just like Canada. The Czech Republic finished second. A little bit of a surprise there. And the Swiss third. The big shocker is that Finland, who looked so good against Canada in the pre-tournament, looked so good against the Americans, albeit it was a tryout roster for the Americans. They won both of those games. They don't make it out of the preliminary round. They will not have a chance at a medal. So it will be the Czech Republic taking on the Americans and the Swiss taking on Russia in the quarterfinals. A perfect group round for Team Canada once again, and most importantly to them, they got better as the thing went along. This, their best game so far, a 4-1 victory over Russia. More ahead. Top Prospects, brought to you by Home Hardware. Homeowners, helping homeowners. First round pick, Ryan Murphy, is a top prospect of the Hurricanes. For advice about any project, answers to any questions, help with plans of any size, get, get all the advice, advice you need from the experts at Home Hardware and Building Center locations. We're 100% Canadian owned. Experts improving all that you do. Experts helping your projects come true. At Canada's home for expert <laughs> advice. <laughs> with expert advice. Some say being a champion is about having a heart of gold. It's about getting back up when you think you can't. It's about being the best person you can be. It's about being yourself. Every champion has a mentor. Who gives you the courage to find your inner champion? Someone who's kind, strong, determined, and passionate? Or is it simply someone who inspires you? Whoever they may be, we thank them for all we see are champions. As uh, early as I can remember, my parents just strapped on the skates, and uh, ever since then I've been playing the game. And growing up, I grew up around a lot of a lot of hockey players. So uh, win or lose, as long as you give it a, an honest effort and give 100 percent, it doesn't matter at the end of the day what the result is. I like to be the player with the puck on a stick with 20 seconds to go. I like I like the pressure. I like uh, I like to be the game changer. And uh, I think up until now, I've, I've done a pretty good job of doing that. And I just want to keep it going like that. Another installment of Top Prospects, brought to you by Home Hardware. Homeowners, helping homeowners. You were a phonograph, I was a kid, I sat with an ear close, just listening. Zero in the rain, tied the way down your face You were a miracle, I was just holding your space You do your thing, leave the rest to us. Ramada Worldwide. Book now at ramada.ca to get our best rate guaranteed and earn Wyndham Rewards points. This is how you make tater salad in West Virginia. I may look exotic, but I'm as country as it comes. Down here with my friends, we go hard. We raise hell. Oh, you like that man you say? And when in doubt, we just buck it. <laughs> buck Wild. New series premiere, Thursday at 10. Only on MTV. Your Gatorade MVP, tough choice. Boone Jenner got the cape. Jonathan Drouin was a force on the first line, but you can't ignore the numbers. You can't ignore the nuge. In on three goals, and now a tournament leading 11 points. The most valuable performer is brought to you by Gatorade, the official fuel of Team Canada. Fuel better, perform better. The only tough part of this game for Canada, Tyler Witherspoon's face gets the skate in the face early on, then the hit from Nakushkin. He's standing by with Nabil. Tyler, a couple scary moments for you in that first period. Uh, nothing more than just a. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was pretty unlucky on that first one. It uh, got the skate up on my my side there. Um, it's a little swollen, but that's about it. Talk about the pace of this game and playing in an atmosphere like this. Yeah, it's. It's great. I mean, uh, packed house here with uh, the Russians, and uh, you know they're screaming every shift. Um, it's uh, it's easy to get for these games, and uh, I thought we came out well. 
Talk about the job your defense did today uh, in shutting down some of their snipers. What were you guys looking to do specifically to shut them down? Yeah, I mean, uh, I thought our deep played right, they played great, and uh, you know they got a uh, heck of a forward group over there, lots of size and skill. So um, I thought we had to, we wanted to play physical against them and uh, not give them much time in the corners and you know stick on puck. And uh, I thought we did that really well. After four games, are you happy with the progression of this team? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, we're getting better every game, uh, more comfortable with each other, and uh, you know, in this game, getting Boone back was a big jump for us. He's a key guy and a big, uh, big energy guy. So um, you know, it was big for us, and I thought we all were all coming together really well. How big is a rest going to be, uh, especially for a guy like yourself, too, uh, just to have a couple days off? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's always good when you get an extra day here in uh, such a short tournament and uh, high pace out there. So you know, we'll get the legs uh, a little bit rejuvenated, and uh, you know, we'll come back even harder in the semifinals. Thanks, Alex. Awesome, thanks. Cheek looks nasty, but Cheek much better than I, because that was scary as that skate got up there. And the play afterwards where he takes it, the face into the boards ended up being the TSN turning point of the hockey game, really, that penalty. Do you, you think they'll be supplementary against Nakushkin? It wouldn't surprise me in the least. I mean, if J.C. Lapon ended up with a one-game suspension for his forearm to the Slovak player into the glass, I can't imagine that Nakushkin wouldn't end up getting a one-game suspension for this. Uh, that would certainly appear to be a pretty flagrant foul directly into the numbers from behind. Goes in with force, and the IIHF looks very looks down on, uh, especially when a head gets slammed into the glass. So it was a it was a you know two bad things for the Russians there. Number one, they they lose Nakushkin for the game, and they're already down a forward because Sigarov, uh, who played on the top line with Yakupov and Kokolchev to start the tournament, he was injured. He is expected back, but he was injured. That put them two forwards down, and they also ended up with a five-minute power pl uh, f five-minute. Uh, a uh, penalty kill situation, which is not a great thing. Uh, if he does get a game, which again, just following the trending of the way they've handed out suspensions, that would be the most likely thing. Maybe a bit of a bonus that Russia gets to play the quarterfinal game because he would sit out a game against Switzerland, assuming the Russians can handle them instead of a semifinal game uh, against, would it be Canada or Sweden or whoever, the Americans, whoever that would be. Uh, the power play that you mentioned because of that five-minute penalty, it, it was so stagnant uh, against the Americans and it was so powerful that those two goals what specifically did they do to change it up less passing more shooting more pucks and bodies to the net and as soon as i mean as soon as the american game was over and steve spot saw the way that the five on three went in the third period he had very simple instruction for his players get the puck to the point and as a result everything was generated from the blue line instead of down low dougie hamilton rifles one over makarov's shoulder and then it was huberto with the shot and Shifley picking up the rebound, and that precisely was the game plan going in. So really well executed by Team Canada to learn the lessons that they, the, that they picked up in, this, in the game against the Americans when the power play almost cost them the hockey game. This is one of those days where everything that Steve Spott did turned to gold. The changes on the power play, all of the lineup changes, almost every single one of them worked. The coach is standing by with the bill. Steve, what was the message to the guys right now in the room? Well, just proud of their effort, obviously. I think that... Uh, Everybody knew how big this game was for a lot of different reasons. So, you know, to see uh, the way our team can play when we have a complete lineup, uh, obviously as a coaching staff, we're real proud of the effort. Was that third period your best period of hockey so far in this tournament? Well, we said we've got to get better every day. Uh, I think when you go through this program of excellence, the one thing that uh, you know, speaks loudly is the fact that you've got to get better every day in a short-term event. And I think today was obviously our best game, and now we have to build on that and prepare for, for the next one. Look like Jonathan Duran makes you look like a genius there. Uh, moving up to the top line, how do you feel that line clicked? Well, I thought Jonathan Huberto also played well with Ryan Strom, and, and, and obviously, uh, you know, Jonathan Duran played great with, with Ryan Nugent Hopkins and, and Mark Shifley. So, you know what, uh, again, just trying to find different ways to create offense and chemistry, and now that we've got our full lineup back together, it gave us an opportunity to do that. Will that top line stay intact? Right now, sure. You know what, obviously, I think uh, Duran played very, very well, and I'll meet with uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins and see his thoughts, but obviously I, I think that uh, everybody was pleased with the effort of the forwards. Uh, how much input do you take from other players, like a guy like Ryan on that? No, I lean on him heavily. Uh, you know what, he's the captain of our hockey club. He, the message that comes from the dressing room comes through him, and, and obviously uh, we've got a great relationship, so I'll speak with Ryan, and obviously with Scott Harrington and, and Jonathan Huberto get their feelings and obviously uh, take their message from the dressing room.
the power play was much more effective today. What kind of adjustments did you guys want to make? Well, you know what, uh, Andre Journey and Mario Duhamel deserve the credit for that. Uh, they made some adjustments. Obviously, they were well prepared for the penalty killing from, from Russia. And, and that five-minute major, I think, was, was very important. If we don't score in that, you know, maybe we're not having the same interview right now. So the fact that we capitalized on that five-minute power play was crucial. Was it getting more pucks to the net? I think so. We, that was our biggest point, I think, uh, of today, uh, was getting pucks and bodies to the net. Makarov is a world-class world, world goaltender. We know him through the Canadian Hockey League, and obviously we faced him a little bit this summer. So he was getting pucks and bodies to the net and trying to make his life difficult, and we did a good job of that. Defensively, are you feeling comfortable where your team is at right now? I, I think so, sure. Uh, Goaltending out, we've done a real nice job. I think collectively as a group, uh, we've played well. We've, we've tracked back hard. Uh, we haven't given up odd man rushes. And anytime you can have an opportunity, to, you know, obviously to keep a world-class team like the Russians to three shots in a third period, you've got to be proud of your group. Obviously, the round robin couldn't probably gone any better, but are there any areas of concern or things you want to tighten up in your game that uh, you'll need to do before the semifinals? Well, getting better every day. Um, you know, again, uh, this is an elite group of guys, but uh, so is everyone else in this tournament. So it's just getting better every day, keeping our focus as a group, and, and keeping a work ethic. I think when you've got a skilled group like this, it's keeping that work ethic uh, first and foremost. Finally, what's the plan for the guys for the next couple of days? Well, you know what, obviously we'll have to see who we're, we're going to be facing, but ultimately tomorrow will be a nice day for us to, to unwind and, and relax a little bit and, and enjoy some of uh, obviously uh, just our being teammates and being around each other. It's been a lot of pressure the last couple of days, so it would be nice to unwind a little bit tomorrow. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. He has certainly had to do a lot of juggling as Craig Button joins us. Give me maybe the three things or the three moves you like best that Steve Spot has made so far in this tournament. Well, this despite the outcry about the goaltending, he's the guy that had the courage in putting Malcolm Subban there. Malcolm Subban certainly is rewarding that courageous move. Secondly, when you are in mid-tournament form and you take Drew Ann, put him on your top mm -hmm. line, that's been outstanding. I mean, obviously rewarded. And then thirdly, knowing what Boone Jenner brought to this team. Three games missed because of suspension. Steve Spott knew exactly what he brought to the team. Big impact in today's game. Nugent Hopkins, three more points, gets to 11 to lead the scoring race. But maybe illustrate for us the entirety of RNH's game. Well, I think you hit the word right on perfectly. Entirety of his game. I mean, we know offensively. Bob McKenzie's talked about leading the tournament offensively. Dangerous. 225 left in the second period. This is Nugent Hopkins. We'll just follow along. First of all, defensively, intercepts the play to the net. And it doesn't stop there. You talk about a player that doesn't have a lot of flash, but he, he goes quietly about his business. But boy, does he make loud statements. Underrated stride and underrated speed, I find, too, with Nugent Hopkins. Glide. Yeah, yeah, well, he does. And you watch here how he shifts here. He just shakes the defender, gets the space that he needs. And his mental speed, his mental quickness is so superb. It's a cut above. It's one thing to be able to be able to be quick and fast and get to the puck. But mentally, he's one, two, three steps ahead. And he's always thinking about the next play and how to break down opponents. And that's how you get so many points. Yeah, I'm not going to compare the guy to Wayne Gretzky, so don't read this wrong. But there's certain elements like that, like you say, the way he reads the game and the way he seems to just cruise around in the offensive end reminds me a little bit of 99 that way. This is a heck of a 55 seconds or so. 55 seconds of dominance. Wow. Quietly going about his business, that's leadership. And again, uh, he could have had the cape today, but he's already had it once. Boone Jenner gets it. Let's uh, hear from Gordon Miller and Ray Ferraro with their thoughts. Ray, it's rare enough for 17-year-olds to make Team Canada the World Junior, to play a lot, but then to play on the number one line like Jonathan Drouin did? Quite a special player, Jonathan Drouin is, and you go back to the evaluation camp, and there were questions, could they take two 17-year-olds on this team? It was thought that Nate McKinnon would be on the team. Well, Drouin has steadily elevated himself up the lineup. He goes on the top line with Ryan Nugent Hopkins, and they are absolutely dangerous tonight almost every time they got the puck in the offensive zone. Nugent Hopkins had three assists, including this one, as Jonathan Drouin picks up the loose puck. He jumps to the front of the net. Steve Spott told us before the game he felt that Drouin maybe could bring a little bit of dash to that line. And when you play the Russians, you have to have that. The Russian games in this tournament have been the fastest pace. Jonathan Drouin really gave a little shot of adrenaline to that top line, which already was playing pretty well. Last time Team Canada had two players who had not yet been drafted was 2009 in Ottawa. That was a golden year for the Canadians. Thank you, guys. Yes, the 17-year-olds contributing, the 19-year-olds were terrific, too, for Team Canada as they roll past Russia and straight into the semis at the World Juniors. What'd you get? 
Lewis is saving a few bucks. Same here. Wendy's. Sorry. So not the same. Going in. <laughs> Saving doesn't mean settling. And Wendy's Everyday Value Menu has eight delicious choices for just $1.89. Loaded with big tastes you can't get anywhere else. Enjoying what you eat and what you pay. That's Wendy's way. Now that's better. With unsurpassed V8 fuel efficiency, the Chevrolet Silverado has never been afraid of a long day's work. And with proven V8 power, it can handle whatever that day throws at it. Or take the Silverado HD. It's the winner of the 2013 Canadian Truck King Challenge. No fear, no problem, and no wonder. Because it has best-in-class towing. Chevrolet Silverado. Guys, I know it's been a rough month, but we're going to have to work through the night. What the heck's that parrot doing here? Parrot? What parrot? Sir? Everything all right? <laughs> Boss? You don't look so good. Might have burned out, sir. Maybe you should go home. Okay. Maybe this can wait till Monday. Yeah. Pepsi Max. Zero calories. Maximum Pepsi taste. At Enterprise Rent-A-Car, we keep things pretty simple. Simply treat our customers the way they should be treated. That's been our philosophy for more than 55 years. It's no more complicated than that. It's simple. Maybe that's why Enterprise is North America's favorite place to rent a car. It's about treating customers the right way. Let us show you what that means. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. What'd you get? Lewis is saving a few bucks. Same here. Wendy's. Sorry. So not the same. Going in. <laughs> Saving doesn't mean settling. And Wendy's Everyday Value Menu has eight delicious choices for just $1.89. Loaded with big tastes you can't get anywhere else. Enjoying what you eat and what you pay. That's Wendy's way. Now that's better. TSN and TSN2 ring in the new tennis year in Melbourne with the 2013 Australian Open. Novak Djokovic returns as the reigning champion, while world number one Victoria Azarenka defends the women's crown. The superstars will light up the courts down under. The 2013 Australian Open begins Sunday, January 13th on TSN and TSN2. New Year's Day is a day off at the World Juniors. We are back on Wednesday with the two quarterfinal matchups. USA versus Czech Republic, 4 a.m. Eastern Time. And then Switzerland against Russia at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Canada will play the winner of the U.S.-Czech game in one semifinal. Sweden will play the winner of Switzerland versus Russia in the other semifinal. Team Canada with that victory also earns an extra day off, two days off. Uh, we'll be back with you, though, on the second with those two quarterfinals. We say Happy New Year, Canada. Enjoy the last night of 2012 and the first day of 2013. We'll see you in 2013 with the medal round from the World Junior Hockey Championship. Thanks for watching. You're watching TSN, Canada's sports leader, a division of Bell Media. You know, the rivalry is huge. It's, it gets bigger every year. We don't like them. They, they don't like us. It's always a battle. It's a war. We all remember what they did to us last year in the semifinals. You know, we're looking to deliver the same fate in Russia. Just to be able to go there and, and try to beat them in their home soil. It's in the back of your mind that, uh, you know, what happened last year or the year before, so, you know, it should be fun.
the final day of 2012, the final day of group play at the World Juniors. On the line, a better start to 2013 with a shorter path to gold. Good morning, Canada. Happy almost New Year. James Duffy and Bob McKenzie with you. Thanks for spending the last day of 2012 with us here at the World Juniors. We had the words every hockey fan loves to hear, Canada versus Russia. They hoped it would come to this when they made the schedule. The last game of the round, packed house in Ufa, Russia, and these two old rivals who have dominated this tournament through the decades. No gold medal on the line today, though that still could happen a little bit later on. Instead, it's first place in the group and a bye to the semifinal. To get you set for it, Gord Miller and Ray Ferraro. Gentlemen. All right, James, Happy New Year coming, everyone. Uh, Dougie Hamilton and Scott Harrington, two Canadian defensemen, did not hit the score sheet in Canada's 2-1 win over the United States, but they played a very important role in that game, and they will again tonight. They, they played the important role. are actually talking they're going over different proposals so hopefully we'll have some big news Wednesday as they meet head-to-head -head again and then also it is the world juniors oh. Canada waiting until Thursday we know this they will take on either the Czech Republic or the United States in the semi-final of course the quarter is still to come uh, but Canada looking real good so far over in Russia I still can't get over that clowny hit I mean how far did his <laughs> helmet fly his helmet went back I mean, it was so, it was ridiculous. You know what, how many sports do we cover back here in the newsroom and we're watching yeah. lots of games? And I'm telling you, that was we like... We see so many hits. Everyone's lunch was probably into next week. Like, 2013 was, may already have the hit of the year. I think, I think it is. That's incredible. Also, the London Knights going for a CHL yeah. record, 25th straight win. The Sarnia String, though, pretty good, giving them all they can handle. Find out, we've got all those highlights, all your bowl highlights from the NCAA as well. Coming up on Sports Center. Morning, everyone. Good morning. You're watching TSN, Canada's sports leader, a division of Bell Media. Welcome to the Sports Center newsroom. I'm Steve Coolius with this World Junior update. It's quarterfinal Wednesday at the World Junior Hockey Championship. First up, the United States taking on the Czech Republic. Winner gets Canada in the semis. 3:30 a.m. Eastern Time. Trubas pass deflects to John Goodrow. The Flames. Fourth round pick 2011, puts in a power play goal, one to nothing USA. Second period, this is not a replay. It's Goodrow again, his second of the game, another power play goal. Five to nothing, he would notch the hat trick. Great feed by Miller. Five power play goals for the United States. They win this game seven to nothing. They'll take on Canada tomorrow morning, 3.30 Eastern with the pregame show. Four o'clock puck drop. The second quarterfinal on this Wednesday, Switzerland against Russia, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, 5 in Vancouver. Welcome back to Sports Center. The NHL and the Players Association held a small group meeting and conference calls Tuesday afternoon to go over the NHLPA's counterproposal. The two Every game against the U.S. is huge. We all remember watching the Canada-USA rivalries growing up. I mean, it's just going to be an intense game. Uh, we definitely are looking forward to it.
this year we didn't get the New Year's Eve Canada USA game that's become such a great part of the World Juniors. Instead, we got them one day early and now three days late. A two for one deal. The sequel is for a trip to the gold medal game. How are you, Canada? James Duffy and Bob McKenzie, welcome to semi-final Thursday at the World Junior Hockey Championship. For the folks in Ufa, Russia, the big match is later on. It's Russia and Sweden, but for everybody in North America, it's right here, right now. They both have something to prove, these arch rivals. Canada trying to get back to the gold medal game after losing in the semis to Russia last year in Alberta. The Americans coming off a disastrous seventh place finish in Alberta. Their first meeting a few days ago, super intense, super hot, super close, and that wasn't an elimination game. This one is. To get you set for it, Gord Miller and Ray Ferraro. Guys? Well, James Ryan Nugent Hopkins was a National Hockey League player last year, so obviously a lot expected of him in this tournament, and he has delivered so far early in the tournament and early in games. Yeah, it's the early in the game stuff that has really set Nugent Hopkins apart from a lot of players. He has points on the first goal of the game in three of the four Canadian games. The U.S. has not matched lines or defense pairs in this tournament. They're playing their sixth game in eight days, and Phil Housley has been mindful about that. I'm curious to see if they try to get Jacob Truba out against Ryan Nugent Hopkins as much as possible. Nugent Hopkins has produced like somebody that is would have been a Rookie of the Year winner last year in the NHL had he not gotten hurt. Now, if Nugent Hopkins gets on the board here again for Canada and can do it a couple of times, Canada has a leg up on the U.S. because there's nobody else in the tournament quite like Nugent Hopkins. That 2-1 game between Canada and the U.S. in the opening round is the rule, not the exception. Canada has won nine of the last ten, but most of those games with one goal games, three of the last seven, have gone to overtime. James? Thanks, guys. There's also been some wild, high-scoring games between the two teams. That classic New Year's Eve game in Ottawa in 2009, the gold medal game in Saskatoon. But I'm not sure we can expect that with the two goaltenders we're seeing today. It looks like a great goaltending battle. Malcolm Subban, the Boston Bruin first-rounder, plays for the Belleville Bulls in the Ontario Hockey League, up against John Gibson, the Anaheim Ducks second-rounder, who plays for the Kitchener Rangers in the OHL. Subban's got a 930 save percentage in the tournament. Gibson's is 950. For my money, Gibson has been the best best all-round goaltender from start to finish in this entire tournament, but Subban has most clearly elevated his game after giving up a six, go six goals in Slo against Slovakia and Germany. He pl played terrific hockey against both the Americans and the Russians, and now they get an opportunity to go head-to-head -head one more time. There was a span of 10 straight years where Canada made it to the gold medal game. It felt like their home. That ended last year with that semi-final loss in Russia. They try to get back there and start a new streak today. Malcolm Subban, the reason they stayed with him when he struggled early, because they believe he thrives under these situations. But he wants to be the guy in games like this. He gets his chance next against the U.S. The 2013 IIHF World Junior Hockey Championship from Ufa, Russia is brought to you by the proud premier sponsors of Hockey Canada, Imperial Oil. Our SO Smart Gasoline works harder for you. Think clean. By RBC. RBC Play Hockey, providing all Canadians an opportunity to play the game. By Nike, official outfitter of the Canadian National Junior Team. And by TELUS, proud telecommunications partner of Hockey Canada. What are you going to do? Take away my skates. Take away my puck. Take away my stick. You can borrow one of mine. Thanks. Take away my pads. I'll just wear thicker socks. Take away our rinks. We got a lot of lakes. A lot of cold lakes. A lot of cold lakes. And ponds. And streets. And tables. Oh! Take away Canada. I just go to Russia. I'd rather not, but I will. Do you want to take away hockey, you better take Canada and everything in it. Because if not, I'll strap rulers to my feet. I'd build a rink with my freezer. I'll find a patch of ice in the middle of the road. i make a puck out of frozen hamburgers. And hit it rocks with a fallen branch if I have to. And I will call it hockey. You guys, what is happening in hockey right now? I think the question on everyone's mind is simple. 
Will there be hockey this year? Bob, you know, I have a love of the game. It really makes you wonder, what's happening? I mean, what's your take? Weeks have turned into months. How much longer are we going to have to wait? Yet another round of talks are scheduled to take place. Bigger than we realize. Mike, think about it. We're a nation raised on hockey, and we're missing the game we love. It's that simple. Don't you have to tell the situation. At the end of the day, we're simply not sure what's going to happen. You, me, the listeners, the entire country, we all want hockey back, plain and simple. You know, we both realize this is a great game. It always has been. There's still lots of kids out there playing the game, and it in its purest form, in its purest level, and it doesn't get any better than that. The 2013 IHF World Junior Hockey Championship from Ufa, Russia is brought to you by Chevrolet Safe and Fun Hockey and by Molson Canadian, proud sponsor of Hockey Canada. It is the semifinals of the 2013 World Junior Hockey Championship, Canada against the United States for a berth in Saturday's gold medal game here in Ufa, Russia. Referees, there is Michael Schoquist of Sweden. The other referee is DDA Massey of Switzerland. Steve Spot, 44-year-old head coach and GM of the Kitchener Rangers. Been a head coach once before for Hockey Canada. The summer under-18 tournament in 2011. He won gold with two members of this team, Morgan Riley and Griffin Reinhardt. Meantime, Bill Housley, first-time head coach for USA Hockey, was an assistant coach twice before with the National Junior Program in 07 and 2011. Starting goal 10 is brought to you by Chevrolet Safe and Fun Hockey. 19-year-old Malcolm Subban has allowed two goals on his last 59 shots. Only one goal against the U.S. and against the Russians. And for the U.S., John Gibson stopped all 31 for a quarterfinal shutout against the Czech Republic. He allowed two goals on 32 shots in a loss against Canada in the opening round. And we're set to get underway. These two great rivals once again facing off in the important game of the World Junior Hockey Championship. The U.S. starts their most dependable line with Cole Bardro, and Canada counters with their fourth line of McNeil, McKinnon, and Camara. Set a physical tone early is the goal for Canada here. Reinhardt backhands that in deep, and American captain Jake McCabe plays that ahead to Blake Pietala. This line for the U.S. was not expected to be a major producer for them, but it has been as McKinnon got knocked down, and Mark McNeil slides the puck ahead. Well, Bardro had his leg clipped there by Anthony Camara. And Nick Piedla comes in, drops it back to Seth Jones. That shot drifts high and wide. Sean Corrali rings it around. Corrali scored 17 seconds in the Americans' first game and hasn't scored since. Camara goes for it. Puck dug out, but at the line, held that shot by Dougie Hamilton went off the leg and wide. Now Truma fans with a clearing attempt. Mark Shifley sends it back in front. The pass back down by Hamilton. Miss Shifley. And Barber ahead to Corrali across the line. Drops it off for Galchenyuk. And the play's offside at the Canadian line. Now Steve Spott said before the game that he would like to get the Jenner Deneau. Richie line out against Alex Delchenyuk, but he wasn't going to be married to the matchup. On the change, Nugent Hopkins got out against them. They stayed that ship. Now as the changes have been made, the Jenner line is out, and Phil Housley comes back with JT Miller. So there will be a little bit of jockeying as each coach tries to get their matchups that they want. BZ centers that for the U.S. with the puck. Through Pat Seelop out of the zone for the United States is Truba. Looks ahead to BC. Truba had his goal scoring streak snapped against the Czechs. Is that shot by JT Miller or stopped by Subban? And had four assists in that game. BC. Backhands that around. Xavier will up looking for it. Now tapped out. John Goodrow slides out in front. BZ back to Truba. Long wrist shot through traffic. Subban never saw it. Now Griffin Reinhardt on JT Miller. Good pressure by the U.S. here in the early stages. John Goodrow spins away from Xavier Ouellette. Off the bench comes Mike Riley with a shot. And a crease violation called against the United States. The faceoff will come outside. First stop of the game for Malcolm Subban is a bit of an awkward one. J.T. Miller's 
is going to end up with the puck. Subban looks to his left. Now he goes back to his right, and he actually stops it upright with his right toe. As Subban was locating the puck, the puck jumped right to J.T. Miller, who quickly shot it at the Canadian goal, and Subban makes his first stop. Canada is the home team in this game and has the last change. Got an issue with a linesman getting some attention at the Canadian bench. He's fixed up. Now it's Ryan Strom's line, along with Ty Raddick, Jonathan Huberto, facing off against Vince Trocek, Rocco Grimaldi, and Tyler Biggs. By the way, Tyler Biggs of the U.S. and Boone Jenner of Canada are teammates and line mates in Oshawa and also very close friends. There are seven players in this game facing a junior teammate this afternoon. Take centers a tip right on goal by Grimaldi, and the save is made by Subban. Now Grimaldi, back to Connor Murphy. Spins in front of Huberto, and Huberto crawls and slides it out. Brought ahead by Ryan Strom. In comes Strom on Riley, shoots up high, and Gibson makes his first save of the game. Gord, you mentioned in the opening how close these games have been between Canada and the U.S. over the years. Up 2-1 with about eight and a half minutes left in the third period. Malcolm Subban makes his right toe save on Ryan Hartman. That was 13 seconds after the U.S. had made the game 2-1. to one. The difference in that save or the puck going into the net could have simply changed the complexion of the tournament. Canada ends up with a day off, a berth in the semifinal, and the U.S. has to play now their sixth game in eight days. McNeil shovels out ahead for Camara. J.C. LeBron of the Kamloops Blazers, the third member of this line. LeBron didn't play the first game against the U.S. He was suspended for a hit from behind against the Slovaks. And Vietla swings it out for Hartman as the U.S. comes in four wide. Ryan Hartman banks it off the end boards and bounces the side of the goal. And Bardro all over Canada's Ryan Murphy. Murphy banks that ahead trying to find LeBron. Seth Jones plays it back for McCain. One thing that Steve Spot thinks will be an advantage for his team is the full complement of forwards. He's used all 13 forwards already. All seven defensemen have been on the ice. They had a much shorter bench the last time around. Now Harrington works his way. He sends it back in front. Tips on goal by Jones. And John Gibson had to be quick there as his own defenseman, Seth Jones, to punch that pass. Don't really think of Scott Harrington as a guy that gets up in the rush, but he is here. Takes a nice feed from Richie and he tries to return it as Jones tries to deflect it away. He gets it right on the goal. John Gibson makes the save on the inadvertent deflection. Now Jenner wins that face-off forward. And Brett Ritchie with it. Spins and shoots off the side of the goal. And Corrali up there by Deneau. Truba looks ahead for Barber, who flips that down to the Canadian zone. Galchenyuk couldn't get to the loose puck. Now Hamilton passed that. It's loose in front of the Canadian goal and knocked down by Corrali. Barber falls. And Hamilton puts that to the open wing. Corrali races to it. Now Deneau with it. Hangs that ahead for Jenner. The pass hopped off his stick. And Gibson plays that across to Shane Gosta's pair, who missed the quarterfinal matchup against the Czechs. He was suspended for a spear against the Slovaks. Reinhardt flips that ahead. J.T. Miller plays it right back in. John Gilbert works it right back and John at the post. Chicks that right off the post and now Shifley tries to go rink wide for Drouin. Ryan Nugent Hopkins picks it out for Canada along with Shifley. Nugent Hopkins tries to get around Beasley who takes him in hard. And now Nugent Hopkins back with it. Throws it down for Drouin. Jonathan Drew after Nugent Hopkins, that shot hit Miller, and Miller shake it up and hit him in the hand. Nugent Hopkins back with it. Lines that down for Shifley, but the pass is intercepted by Murphy, and his lead pass for Goodrow just missed. And John Goodrow, who's been on a scoring tear with five goals in the last two games, almost opened the scoring for Team USA. McKay reverse that into the feet of Huberto. Jonathan Huberto tries to find Ratty. Now Rocco Grimaldi has that pass chipped down to the Canadian zone. Icing waved off as Ty Wotherspoon goes back, taken in hard by Biggs. Well, that's a good play by Wotherspoon. He takes the hit from Biggs on the forecheck, controls the puck, and then moves it out with one simple pass. Jeff Jones ahead to Tyler Biggs, that long shot into the midsection of Malcolm Subban. 
Griffin Reinhardt gets pressured up the sidewall. He doesn't get the puck out with any authority. And then the slithery John Goudreau walks into the slot. We saw this move a couple of times. He'll take it to his backhand, and it just ticks the top of the crossbar. A nifty little move by Goudreau. We talked to him yesterday after the game. He was still in his skate. He's not very tall. That was, I know he's small, but wow, he's a little guy. Truman hammered that wide. Subban was screen of the shot. And Sheila plays it back in deep. Ryan Murphy had to Nate McKinnon that pass too far for him. Now Truba through the middle for Bardro. Now a bouncing puck for McKinnon. He's got McNeil with him. Nate McKinnon spins and shoots and gets and swats that away. Truba lead pass for Piedla. Xavier Ouellette stays with him step for step. Picked out by Camara. Anthony Camara of the Barry Colts slides out ahead and Mark McNeil fires it down. No score, six and a half minutes into the opening period. Scott Harrington, his London Knights had their winning streak stopped at 24 on January 1st. Lost in overtime. First loss since November the 1st. Yeah, so they get a loss and get a point. I'm not exactly lost on November 1st. They got a point as well. Now Subban out to play it. Around for Deneau. And Hamilton flies out ahead for Richie. Brett Richie lost the handle. And at the line, Richie gathers it back up. Ahead for Deneau. Across he goes for Jenner. And Mike Riley wraps that around for Barber. Barber. For Galchenyuk. Corrali comes sleeping in. Now Galchenyuk on it. Tries to spin it back. And now picked up by Riley. Riley sends it in front. Backhand shot by Barber. Saved by Subban. The puck is loose. Three Canadians standing in the crease. Now set back for McCabe. He just scores! Jake McCabe opens the scoring as the U.S. has a 1-0 lead. Canada's very concerned about the U.S. defense getting up in the play. This rush starts behind the U.S. net with Mike Riley. Riley has got the puck here. Now watch where he goes. He chips it around the boards. Now he's up in the play. That creates a disadvantage for Canada back in the zone. The U.S. stays on the puck. And you're going to watch McCabe come in late after Riley comes in to pick up the puck again. Barber stopped twice by Subban. And then McCabe threw a massive player. You see Subban has no idea where it is. And the U.S. has the, the lead. But Mike Riley skates about 200 feet around the ice to set up that goal. Second of the tournament for Jake McCabe, the U.S. captain. Now Shifley tries to drop that back for Nugent Hopkins. And Miller has it for the U.S. Seth Jones drops it back. Now taps it ahead to J.T. Miller. Miller in, shoots, that goes wide. Beasy got it now for the U.S. And Jim Beasy plays that back for Jones, who had to leave the zone. He hooks it ahead for Beasy. Doubles out in front of Subban, steers that away. Now Jones down to Beasy, the pass was too far for him. And J.T. Miller has it. Miller down to Beasy. Centers it. And now Drew, I'm waiting for it, but reaches. Good roll. Centers just missed Beasy. With a decided edge in play in the opening eight minutes of this game. Goss is there. Makes it up to Hopkins. And yeah, now the play is called offside at the Canadian line. 1 0 the U.S. with the early lead. Never forget their first helmet. Chevrolet believes nothing is more important than safety. That's why we're keeping things safe and fun by giving away Bauer helmets to five-year-olds all across Canada. Chevrolet, 
safe on the road, safe on the ice. Heard the two semifinals today at the World Junior Hockey Championship later on today, this evening, UFA time. It'll be the Swedes against the Russians. Now a chance for Trocek. A chance in front as well for Biggs. And Malcolm Subban hangs on to that. And another turnover by the Canadians in their own zone. Scores, there's two sides to playing lots of games or having a couple of days off. When you have a couple of days off, the chances are you're going to be a little sloppy. And it takes you a moment to get your legs into it. Canada's displayed that here in the first nine minutes. They've been very sloppy with the puck. They've had poor coverage defensively, and they're lucky that it's only 1-0. The concern for the U.S., six games in eight days, would come later in the game, whether their legs stay. Morgan Riley, across the tie, Wotherspoon. Now fired ahead by Strom. Gibson out to play it. Again, under IHF rules, goaltenders are not limited in any way from playing the puck. They pass with a speedy rock over Grimaldi. They watch by Riley. And Grimaldi chips it down to Truba, who's in deep for the U.S. Truba around for Trocek. Vince Trocek, who plays for Saginaw, drops that back, and the shot by Grimaldi, knocked away by Malcolm Subban. The lead pass for Ratty, and Grimaldi knocked that away. Riley for Wotherspoon. To Strom. Cannon in the midst of a change. Strom sends that rink wide. Kamara had that bounce off his stick. And Connor Murphy had the pass go by him as Reinhardt is back to pick it up. This is Ryan Murphy with it. Both teams have a Murphy and Riley on defense. This is Ryan Murphy for Canada. Gregson shoots up high. Missed up top. It's his teammate from Kitchener, John Gibson. Now Ryan Hurdle with it. Comes there by Reinhardt. Bardrow in for it. For Piedla. And getting there first is Ryan Hartman. And waiting for it is Nate McKinnon. And McKinnon tries to hook that puck back. And now finally does get it back. That's the midway point of the opening period. Ryan Hartman. Plays for Plymouth in the OHL. Eight of these American players play in the Canadian Hockey League. It's nine. J.T. Miller played in it last year. And Kamara taps that down to the U.S. zone. Jones quickly ahead. And Barber almost got there first. But Hamilton raced back to take it away. Now that pass is too far. And that'll be icing against the Canadians. We'll go back to the goal by Jake McCabe and the traffic that Malcolm Subban has to deal with. Nine players, eight players in counting McCabe in line with that shot. Look, it looks like a Canadian team picture in front of Subban. He's trying to shove the players out. He doesn't even realize the puck has gone past him. Impossible for the goaltender to see it as the U.S. defense creates the game's first goal. Hamilton misses Camara icing again. Closed captioning is brought to you by The Home Depot. Your Home Depot gift card gets you the gift you really want. U.S. out shooting Canada 9-4 to four the early going. And leading by a count of 1-0. Canada fell behind 2-0 in the opening round against the Slovaks. Here's Galchenyuk. Fires that wide of the goal. Now McCabe with it. Rolling puck. He bounced it down in front. Tip wide by Corrali. And Sean Corrali back on it. Chris crossing with Barber. Now Riley Barber. Feeds it across. That pass on the backhand of Seth Jones. He's stuck in from the line. Now the puck is up into the meshing and out of play. We've seen the U.S. defense up and creating problems for the Canadians defensively. Anthony Camara has to have his head on a swivel. He's focused on the puck here a little bit. And Jones gets behind him. Camara's able to deflect the puck away. But you can see the difficulty for the defensive forwards. You've got to have good defensive posture to help with the puck. But you've always got to look over your shoulder. Takes off one by Miller. Now Beasy on it. And Beasy down for Goodrow. John Goodrow. Trying to find some space. His centering pass knocked away by Xavier Ouellette. And Ouellette chips it there for Nugent Hopkins. Up ahead for Drew Ann, who's away with Shifley. And Mark Shifley chips it down to the U.S. zone. Johnson Fair watching him. Shifley down for Drew Ann, the pass out of his reach. Beasy. Being watched there by Nugent Hopkins, and now the puck turned over at center ice, but Shifley gives it right back to Goodrow. And J.T. Miller flips it down to the Canadian zone. Well, that up ahead to Shifley. 
Shagley, a hard pass for Drew and that's kicked off his skate. And Willette once again gathers it up and puts it down to the U.S. zone. Austin Bear being watched there by Drew and Slides that in for Biggs, but stepping in front of that was Weathers Boot and fires it back down to the U.S. zone. Eight to go in the opening period. Austin Bear, whoa, lead pass for Biggs, who's in behind Weathers Boot. Nicely waved off as Morgan Riley's back to pick it up. Fires out ahead for Ratty, the pass too hot for him to handle. Murphy, up ahead to Grimaldi. Rocco Grimaldi sliding in. Gets it on Witherspoon, centers it, and Huberdeau's back to pick it up for Canada. Now Morgan Riley. Picks his way ahead. Riley still going across the line. Riley walks in and shoots, gets the save, the rebound. Pounced on by the U.S. goaltender. You're watching the 2013 World Junior Hockey Championship. On this stage, everyone is talented. So being better comes down to who has more go. It could be the grinder, the playmaker, the sniper, or the shutdown defender. The guy who just has more fire. And when you have a whole team of those guys, well then, just add fuel to the fire. Gatorade Perform. Fuel better than water. Fuel better, perform better. Atomic Hockey Program. Proud supporter of teamwork. A rare offensive zone face-off for Canada here in the first period. McKinnon will take it against Cole Bardrow. Two the players have drafted. McKinnon because he's not old enough. Bardrow's gone through two NHL drafts. Now he showed out at the end level take the draw. So McKinnon moves into the middle on this fourth line. He replaces McNeil as LaFon gets the check. Camara off to McKinnon, face off win for LaFon. Centers it. That's skipped away from McKinnon. The puck comes all the way down to the Canadian zone where Ryan Murphy's back to pick it up. Murphy stepped away from Pietela. Pass through the middle for McKinnon. That rolled off his stick. Seth Jones battling with Nate McKinnon. This will do here. And the NHL draft next June. Pietela, long shot, goes off the leg of Murphy. Now Pietela back on it. Banks it back to Jones. Seth Jones has a look, tries to bank it off the inboards, and that's knocked away to Camara. Anthony Camara. For LaFon, back to Camara. Drops it back to J.T. LaFon. He fires it off the end wall to Camara. At the line, Hamilton, long reshot, hit the skate, rebound, loose it, well as LaFon, stop point flag by Gibson. Now gloved down by Hamilton, but not by him. And the race forward as Harrington goes back, being watched by Hartman. Hamilton. Ahead for Jenner. He collides with Truba. He's ahead to Deneau. Philip Deneau at the line. That is rush stopped by Galchenyuk. Truba, the Winnipeg Jet first rounder. Fires it down and rolls in front. And Hamilton had to be careful with Corelli. Bearing it on him. Brett Ritchie. Long bang pass. The Truba gathers up for the U.S. And now Jake Truba. Moving in across the line is Truba. Jumping in front. He played it across. And Brent Ritchie got in the way of that. Now will that two to know. Under six to go in the opening period. Long pass chipped in by Ritchie. And Seeloff is back to get it for the U.S. Now Dino tries to seal the wall for Canada. Picks up a loose puck to Willette. His shot deflected down in front and knocked away from Jenner. Truba hammered there by Dino. Now Barber taken down by Jenner. In comes Boone Jenner with a drive and Gibson with a glove save on Canada's Boone Jenner. Best chance for Canada comes from their fourth line. J.C. LePong gets behind Seth Jones on the shot. Gibson makes a nice left pad save and then as Kamara goes in to finish Jake McCabe, his stick comes up and clips Seth Jones on the chin as Kamara's looking one way his stick clips Jones you see he's got a little nick on the base of his chin but Canada gets their best chance 
from their fourth line and J.C. LaPont works his way in with McKinnon in the middle and Kamara on the left and they force John Gibson into a difficult stop. Main time for the U.S. zone. Nugent Hopkins through in. Shifley the forward line for Canada. J.T. Miller will take the draw for the U.S. Shots are 9-7 in favor of the United States. Well, there are two players playing pro hockey in the American League this year. J.T. Miller plays for the Connecticut Whale, a Rangers first-round pick, and of course, Nugent Hopkins playing this year in Oklahoma City. Good row. Knocked off stride, lost his stick. Now Scott Harrington centers it, goes off the leg of Mike Riley. Bounces down to Shifley. Mark Shifley looks around for Drew, and that pass hopped away from him. Now Goodrow back on it, and he's got company. Ahead for Miller, along with Beasy. Harrington stays with J.T. Miller. Comes up to Goodrow, trying to center it. Newton Hopkins knocked it away. And Shifley's got Drew with him. Shifley, Newton Hopkins, in shoot! Like the two wide of the goal off the stick of Ryland. Long shot by Hamilton, pinballs down in front. Wotherspoon keeps it alive. His first shot hit Shifley in the rear end. And now Newton Hopkins batting it out of the air. Goodrow along with Miller. And the pass bounces into the feet of Wotherspoon. A little bit more energy here for Canada the last couple of minutes. They've had a good four-check shift. They have a three-on-two with Newton Hopkins, Shifley, and Drouin. For Trocek. Empty pass for Grimaldi. Rafa Grimaldi drops it back. McCabe shoots, scores! Jake McCabe got two, and the U.S. has a 2 nothing lead. The U.S. breaks out, a nifty move by Trocek in the middle of the ice, but they catch a break with Grimaldi's pass, which is going across the ice, hits the Canadian defender's skate. Grimaldi passes the puck here. Oh, it's actually off of, Tro off of Trocek's skate. And it goes right to McCabe. Again, Canada's screen, Malcolm Subban. Morgan Riley's right in front of the goaltender. You see Subban drop his arms in dejection, and he folds his hands skyward. He doesn't see the puck, and Jake McCabe, the Buffalo Sabres second rounder, had one goal in five games coming in. He's got a couple here in the U.S. lead by a two, by a two spot. Not known as an offensive defenseman at Wisconsin. Last year, his partner at Wisconsin was Justin Schultz, the Edmonton Order free agent, who's having such a great year in the American League. He was the defensive conscience in that pair. And here he's got two goals. And the Canadians trail 2 0 for the second time in the tournament. The first time was against the Slovaks, and that man, Morgan Riley for Canada, was the one who scored the first goal to get them back in it. But the U.S. full value for the 2 0 lead in the early going. Now Riley for McKinnis to Camara. Now Camara feeds a ring wide, the pawn with it, and his stick lifted by Piedela. And it's brought back by Seelov. Looks ahead for Bardro, chips that wide of the goal. Bardro back with it. Steps around the pond. Beats the Galchenya for Hartman. Now Lucian from Bardro shoots. Too bad the save, but way up in the air, battled away by Riley. And Connor Murphy plays it back in deep. Ryan Murphy. Rink wide pass to Camara. Anthony Camara fires that down in the U.S. zone. Gibson. He's there for Corrales. That pass almost bounced in front. Here's Schinner with it. Boone Jenner was tied for the OHL goal scoring lead with 27 when he left for the Canadian camp. Barber goes ahead to Galchenia. He's also got 27 in the O. And the play's offside at the Canadian line. From the goaltender, Malcolm Subban out. Canada has to fight their way back into this. It's not going to come easy. And here Subban makes a very, very important stop on Cole Bardrow. There's that third U.S. line with Bardrow and Hartman and Pietala. And they create a chance. Bardrow's scoring chance is turned aside. And Subban's going to have to shut the door here as Canada has to inch their way back into this. Bonneau had that pass, skip out of his reach, and Corrali is back for it, being shadowed by Brett Ritchie. Barber, up through the middle for Galchenyuk, and Alex Galchenyuk with it. Flips it in front, goes off a leg and just wide. Now centered Subban, stop that centering attempt from Corrali. Galchenyuk gloves it down. And now Jones with it. 
Seth Jones trying to get around to no. And Barber chips that to an open wing. Hamilton through the middle for Jenner. That's stolen away by Miller. J.T. Miller shoots. He missed high and wide. And Jenner has it back. Richie takes his man, McCabe, in hard. And now Jones with it for Barber. Rink wide to Miller. 145 to go in the period. Miller shoots. And Subban makes the glove save. Well, the wait is over, Canada. Now it's your chance to join the Amazing Race Canada. Simply go to ctv.ca slash Amazing Race Canada for details. Shifley on the draw against Miller with 1.40 to go in the opening period. The draw controlled by the U.S., but not done fairly. Faceoff will come out inside. Or will it? Nope. He was back in the Canadian zone. Miller shown out. And he loses that draw to Shifley. Now will that pass ahead to Shifley? Moving it along with Druin. And Shifley taken down. There's not yet been a minor penalty in this game. That would be the first time we've seen that in the tournament. This, this far without a penalty in a period. McCain's pass knocked down. Drew trying to feed it back in front. Just a little reach of Nugent Hopkins. And Beasley. Snaps that around. Goodrow being watched there by Reinhardt who has to retreat. Goodrow long pass ahead to Miller who receives it nicely and moves it on the left. Heels back trying to center it. And now Beasley on it. Final minute of the opening period. Beasley. His pass intercepted by Nugent Hopkins. Newton Hopkins looks ahead for Shifley. Pass got caught up in some bad ice in front of the Canadian bench, and play is called. The U.S. has done a really good job of keeping the Canadians in front of them. They haven't chased them up the ice. Steve Spots team has not broken the puck out with any efficiency, so when the puck does come out, there's no puck support. The U.S. has turned it back around, and the majority of this period has been played in the Canadian zone as a result. Kulov goes back. He's got Strom on him. Umido tries to feed in front. Raddy looking for it. It's banked away to Grimaldi. Oh, Grimaldi. Ahead to Big. And Tyler Big spins back in the corner. Looks down to Grimaldi. Right, that back pass for Trocek. And Raddy has it for Canada. Ty Raddy in across the line with time. Walks in. Shoot. And that ramps high off a stick. As Biggs got us up the loose puck. Now Ryan Murphy has to race back to take it away from Biggs. Murphy got tangled up with Grimaldi. And play continues. Final seconds now of the period. Trocek slides that down to the corner. And the United States will leave the opening period of shooting Canada 12 to 8 and leading by a score of 2 to nothing. Our first intermission coming up. Kids never forget their first helmet. Chevrolet believes nothing is more important than safety. That's why we're keeping things safe and fun by giving away Bauer helmets to five-year-olds all across Canada. Chevrolet, safe on the road, safe on the ice. Our goal was clear from the start to help improve minor hockey in communities we serve by providing uniforms and ice time and renovating community rinks, giving young players a better shot at their goal. Lowe's never stopped improving. My identity was stolen. There's a person that is maxing out my credit card. Do not cut the card. Can you just run this part hey, one more time? Go. Who am I? What the hell is this? This is the person who stole your identity. Every day I'm hustling, hustling, hustling. Sammy Bigelow. Patterson. Look at her. She's like a hobbit. Going after Bilbo. Gotcha. <laughs> identity thief. Do you have her? I got off to a slow start. In theaters February 8th. It's New Year's Madness at the Brig. Saturday and Sunday only. Get this body leather sofa only $3.99. This reclining sofa only $5.99. This sectional is only $6.99. Hurry, quantities are limited for sofas. Nobody beats the Brick. My husband and I own a dairy farm, and we really love it. Hey, what? 
guys. Our employees aren't just employees. They're friends. My husband had his accident. Hello. It was a big shock for everyone. When he came back home, he was pretty beaten up. He was housebound for five months. He felt trapped. Are you looking for something? Yes. I'm looking for work. There you go. <laughs> At the Coors Light Brewing Company, we are often asked, what makes Coors Light? Coors Light. Do we age it cold and fill it cold? Yes, sir. Do we brew it below zero degrees Celsius? You betcha. Did we come up with a way for your beer to tell you when it's the perfect cold drinking temperature? Absolutely. And would we serve it to you in delicious slow motion? <laughs> I think we just did. Coors Light. Who wants a cold one? Esso medals and certificates of achievement have recognized kids in minor hockey for 30 years. Order your free medals and enter to win one of three $10,000 prizes for your minor hockey association. Visit essomedals.ca for contest rules. Imperial Oil, premier sponsor of Hockey Canada. I'm Ryan Murphy, and I play for the Kitchener Rangers. And this is five puck agility with shot. This drill consists of five pucks in a squared shape with one puck in the middle. You use your quick feet to go around each puck while going around the middle one. After every turn, you're facing one way, and at the end, you're shooting the first puck you went around. This would help a young player develop the game because it works on your tight turns. As a hockey player, you need to be able to move it quickly around guys and get quick shots on that. James Duffy and Bob McKenzie back with you after what was a terrible period for Team Canada. You outlined the game plan in our pregame show. Safe to say they executed it to complete imperfection? Yeah, pretty much so, especially number one. And we talked about puck management being so important for Team Canada. They want to get pucks deep. They want to get on the cycle. And all they did that period was turn the puck over. You could not have a worse period of puck management than what Canada had in the first period. It's very difficult to string two passes together, and the Americans were getting chances off the turnovers by Team Canada. Very fortunate there that Johnny Goodrow didn't take advantage of that. Again, a turnover at the blue line. All three zones, Canada's turning the puck over. They're getting no sustained pressure because they can't make uh, a, a series of passes, and Subban's had to come up big a couple of times. Uh, complete domination by the Americans. The Canadians have nothing going for them right now because they simply keep turning the puck over in all three zones. Your second thing was containing the U.S. defense. Two goals off the D. Two goals by Jake McCabe. He's got two goals at the University of Wisconsin this season. Now he's got two goals in this hockey game. And Canada's becoming entirely puck-focused when it's down low in the offensive zone. And they're giving a real tough time getting track of where the Americans are, where the American defensemen are, and they're getting some great looks from the point. Subban, no chance because he's being screened. Everybody is weak on the back check, and when they do get back into the zone, they're not focusing on the most dangerous players on the ice, which for the Americans is on their blue line. That first goal looked like in soccer when they'd form a wall before a free kick, which doesn't work so well in hockey when the goaltender cannot see the puck. The other thing, quarterfinal, the curse of the bye. Two of the last three gold medalists, four of the last six finalists have played a quarterfinal game. We saw this last year against Russia where Canada had no jump early after getting the bye to the semifinal. Uh, the tournament format changes next year, so everybody has to play a quarterfinal. Maybe that's a good thing for Canada because they seem to have struggled, at least lately, in the last couple of years when they've had the extra day off. 2 nothing, still 40 minutes to go from Ufa. You got me curious. I'm curious what makes you so curious. Django Unchained has been nominated for five Golden Globe Awards, including Leonardo DiCaprio, Christoph Waltz, Quentin Tarantino, and Best Motion Picture of the Year, Django Unchained. Now play. At the Coors Light Brewing Company, we are often asked, what makes Coors Light? Coors Light. Do we age it cold and fill it cold? Yes, sir. Do we brew it below zero degrees Celsius? You betcha. Did we come up with a way for your beer to tell you when it's the perfect cold drinking temperature? Absolutely. 
And would we serve it to you in delicious slow motion? <laughs> I think we just did. Coors Light. Who wants a cold one? Hey, Dave. Who should we use to ship this to Boston? FedEx. But it's not urgent. Don't be so quick to judge. FedEx is also amazing. And less urgent. I know. I've seen this commercial. But we need freight, Anthony. FedEx is amazing at freight, too. But, Orlock, we're small. FedEx has small business solutions, too, you know. Huh. I didn't know FedEx did all that. But what's with the gimmicks? Beats me. For ground, freight, or small business, FedEx, solutions that matter. Something to tell you. Only that was that. Breaking up. Breaking up. Breaking up is hard to do. She met you and liked your face. Now she really needs her space. You're done. You're done. You were two and now you're one. Chocolate. <laughs> RBC is proud to support amateur hockey programs in Canada, helping our young athletes thrive both on and off the ice. As a premier partner of Hockey Canada, we support teams from across the country as they compete for the RBC Cup, Canada's National Junior A Championship. Bowl season continues tonight. It's the Fiesta Bowl on TSN2 Oregon against Kansas State, all leading up to the BCS title game on Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern, number one Notre Dame and number two Alabama. Malcolm Subban's given up two goals, hasn't seen either one. Morgan Riley's in his way on this one. Riley did have a good end-to-end -end rush, which Canada needs much more of. Morgan Riley standing by with the bill. Morgan, are you surprised the way this team started the game? Uh, no, not really. Uh, it's a huge game, obviously, and they're a great team, so I think we uh, expect them to come out hard, and, uh, and I think as a team, we just have to play better. What about the start uh, you guys had? Are you surprised with that? A little bit, yeah, but uh, I think as a team, uh, you know, we're pretty aware that there's, uh, there's plenty of hockey left in this game, and, uh, and we're just going to keep getting better. Malcolm was screened on both goals there. Uh, what do you guys have to do defensively to change that? Uh, just block some more shots and, and let him, him handle the point shots and that kind of stuff, but uh, as a team, we just have to be a bit smarter in our own zone. Thanks, Morgan. Thanks. about any project, answers to any question, help with plans of any size, get, get all, all the advice, advice you need from the experts at Home Hardware and Building Center locations. We're 100% Canadian owned. Experts improving all that you do. Experts helping your projects come true. At Canada's home for expert advice. <laughs> With expert advice. 
Some say being a champion is about having a heart of gold. It's about getting back up when you think you can't. It's about being the best person you can be. It's about being yourself. Every champion has a mentor who gives you the courage to find your inner champion. Someone who's kind, strong, determined, and passionate, or is it simply someone who inspires you? Whoever they may be, we thank them for all we see are champions. When I was five, I made the underage all-star team, and from then on in, I was kind of always a top player, and uh, I just love playing, I love scoring goals, and uh, I seemed pretty good ahead, so I kept it going, and uh, I'm happy with where it took me. I just want to be a good, uh, obviously the best hockey player I can be, but also great in the community, and a, a guy that's uh, you know, real friendly and personable on and off the ice, and, uh, and to be a champion, it's, it's a lot of hard work, and um, you really have to dedicate yourself, but I think that's what separates you know, the players that can play at the next level and the players that can't, the uh, ones that really want to be champions and be better than everyone else. Another installment of Top Prospects, brought to you by Home Hardware. Homeowners, helping homeowners. You do your thing, leave the rest to us. Ramada Worldwide. Book now at ramada.ca to get our best rate guaranteed and earn Wyndham Rewards points. Jack Reacher is a brilliant movie. Rolling Stone raves. Tom Cruise nails it. It's part Jason Bourne, part Dirty Harry. Somebody dead? And if someone is, they died of shame because I was being gentle. Jack Reacher. Am I free to go? Excel is a proud sponsor of Hockey Canada. This is Doug. He jogs twice a week. And Doug jogs for a reason. He jogs so he can rationalize eating those things he loves. Things like AAA Angus beef burgers with bacon and those little crispy fried onion bits. You know those? Oh, they're good. We call this a diet. That's right, diet with a G. It isn't some diet, and this isn't some diet beer. Molson Canadian 67. Are you on a diet? Your first period scoring summary is brought to you by Chevrolet. Safe and fun hockey. U.S. outshoots Canada 12 to 8 with Jake McCabe's two goals. They now have 10, the U.S. Defense Corps does in this tournament. And Truba, Seth Jones, and McCabe are 1 2 3 in defense and scoring in the tourney. Gordon Miller, Ray Ferrar. Well, first things first, the U.S. was very good in that first period. Canada, not so much. Well, Canada helped them along by having all kinds of trouble managing the puck in their defensive zone. They turned it over eight times behind their own blue line. And it started early, and it continued on through the opening 20 minutes. Canada seemed to be a step slow, seemed sluggish. And, of course, on the first goal, they have all kinds of people packed in front of Malcolm Subban. He can't see it. Jake McCabe gets a break on the second one as the puck bounces to him. Subban again with the shoulder shrug because he can't see it. If Canada's going to work their way back into this game, it's going to have to come on the, on the back of moving the puck way more efficiently out of their zone and getting a four-check game going on. Their game plan was to play the game below the U.S. goal line. They've been there very infrequently so far. Morgan Riley banks that in for Drew, and back to pick it up is goaltender John Gibson. Looks ahead for Pietala, slides that across the pass, knocked down for the moment by Drouin. And now Shifley with it. Seth Jones had lost his stick. And now Pardro hooks it ahead for Pietala. Pardro jumps around Riley. Cole Pardro. Ties it back to McCabe, holds the line, and McCabe puts that in the corner. Jake McCabe has two goals this year at Wisconsin's five in 41 games of his career. Shifley, ahead for Drew Ann. Flips it ahead for Nugent Hopkins. In with Shifley. Nugent Hopkins shoots. And Gibson has that as McKay battles with Mark Shifley in front of the U.S. goal. We have not yet seen a penalty call of the game. Wrestling match breaks out in front of John Gibson. That's the first time we've seen Ryan Nugent Hopkins in a dangerous position. He gets Seth Jones to move to his...